Hi. So before when before actually drawing the ray diagrams and predicting how images will form, it's important to know some basic terminology so that you can talk about it. And we are going to use the terminology a lot. So in this video, we'll primarily focus on the terminologies which we will use while dealing with mirrors. So let me ask you a question. What is an image? In a, in a very layman language, an image is what we see in a mirror, right? And it's kind of correct because that's what we see. We know something is not there and it appears as if it's there. It's called an image. Well, better definition is that when light rays seem to come and intersect at a point or actually intersect at a point, they form what's called an image. Now, how will things happen? So, say two rays are coming from an object and they do something, okay, they refract, they bend and they actually meet at a point, okay. Now, to us, it will look as if the object is here itself and the, uh, the image in which there is actually meat, it's called real image. Another important thing is when the rays don't meet but they seem to meet. How? We'll see. So we take a mirror and this is a polished side. Now if you draw the ray diagrams correctly then you will see that non-parallel rays of a mirror actually they will diverge. Okay, so light rays come and they will seem to diverge. And if you look At the two diverging rays, okay, they will seem to come from another point. Not the same point, but from another from another point. Why does this happen? Well, our brain tends to see objects this way. Arise, uh, what happens when light two diverging rays come? Our brain thinks that okay, if diverging rays divergent rays are coming, then they must be coming from that point, and therefore that's what our brain does. It extends the Rays backward, and we get an image. And this image, so this is not is a, this is clearly the rays are diverging. So it's clearly not a real image. This is called a virtual image. Okay. So that's uh, I was talking about images. Now, what do you have, what have we dealt with? We have dealt with a mirror, a plane mirror. Okay, a straight mirror. Now, what will happen if we play with this mirror? Okay. What if we bend it? Is this possible? Well, no. It's it's in a daily life, okay? The spoon is a good example. It has a reflecting surface and it's quite curved. Okay? So this is a very good example for a daily a daily life example. Now, how do we go about this? Now if we do it some random way and do it something like this, and of course this will form a mirror. And this will form what we call a parabolic mirror. But what you want to deal with is a very special class of mirrors called spherical mirrors. Now, how do we make spherical mirrors? So, as it names, I guess, let us take a sphere, okay? Okay? Yeah? Now, we chop off one part, okay? So, we cut it like something like this, okay? Yeah. What we are left with, we are left with this part, okay? We we'll remove this one and we take this part. Let me draw it like this, okay? Yeah. Now we can do two things. Either this can be the reflecting surface or this one. How do we go about it? You paint, coat this side or you paint this side with silver or mercury. So the, all there is which will. Uh, interact with this mirror won't go through it, it they will reflect so you can either you can make this side polish this side this is the polish side that's how we denote it we draw these little marks so this is one thing you can do and of course there's another thing which you can do you can polish this one oh sorry this is the same this side okay 
the in you can call it the outer side okay if this is the this will be the outer side and this will be the inner side so I, if either you can polish the outer outer one or you can polish the inner one now what are these names called okay what are these mirrors called so if you draw a mirror like this and we polish it's called the outer surface and we take another mirror and we polish the inner surface now this looks like a cave okay <laughs> something curved going away from it this is called a cave and these mirrors are called concave mirrors just a name okay so and uh, again this one it looks as, as if it's bulging outwards we call this a convex mirror okay and clearly there's a difference between these two so in a concave mirror the outer side is polished and the inner side is reflecting whereas in a convex mirror the inner side is po polished and the outer side is reflecting another important difference is okay we'll see this see what if I shine rays at this mirror okay? and this mirror so intuitively what do you think will happen to the rays how by what what will happen I mean how will these rays go after reflection so will they do converge or will they diverge some now if you think about it a little bit the rays in the concave mirror will converge at this point converge towards converge inwards rather so the rays come and they'll go somewhere there See, this ray comes and this somewhere there and this might retrace itself you know why we'll see so again a, conver a concave mirror can also be called a converging mirror because it converges rays of light what about convex mirror now this the surface itself is bulging outwards okay the surface if you see will reflect light away from the surface it will diverge the rays of light so rays of light will go something like that okay there it will seem to go away from something and this will now so we can say that convex mirror is a diverging mirror it diverges the rays of light now that we are done defining what con concave and convex mirrors are let us start labeling a few in important points and lines for these mirrors an important point is this one the right the point right at the center of this mirror and this one this point is generally denoted as P and this is called the pole of the mirror okay so is this one again you can denote this by as P this again this is called the pole of a mirror now I told you these mirrors are spherical okay and these mirrors are made from a sphere and a sphere has a center so this mirror must have a center we call this C again for a convex mirror it will lie somewhere over there now, this C is known as the center of curvature okay so center of curvature good now what can I, what if we join these two points and extend it okay so we join these two there we join these two there so we get an axis like something and this thing this length this axis rather is called the principal axis so if this is say some point x there and some point x there so x p and it will go on forever is called the principal axis 
an interesting property of this circle almost every property of a sphere or a circle can be derived using its radius right it's the only way in which we can define a sphere or a circle what is 